Now for our story. This morning, driving into Los Angeles from his house at the beach, Paul Cromwell felt that the prospect for the next few months was definitely brighter. He had been decidedly unhappy about Lisa Fenner's arrival a few days ago. Lisa had descended without warning, bag and baggage, stating simply that her husband Lance had left her, that she could no longer continue dancing under the circumstances. The circumstances being that Mrs. Fenner was expecting a child. Mr. Cromwell had reason to regret a remark he had made in a sentimental moment several months ago when he first met Lisa. He had told her never to hesitate to call on him if she needed anything, and she had taken him at his word. But Paul Cromwell felt trapped, surrounded, and a little bit afraid. He didn't know quite how far to trust Lisa. But everything was more promising now that Kit Mead had arrived in Los Angeles. He relaxed in the knowledge that Kit had said she'd handle Mrs. Fenner. She'd take her off his hands. Yes, it was wonderful in more ways than one that Kit was out in California. Driving into town, Mr. Cromwell remembered that Kit herself had brought up the subject of a winter in New York two years ago. They'd seen a lot of each other then. Mr. Cromwell remembered and smiled. Paul called for Kit at her hotel. They were already headed back towards the beach when Paul said... Oh, by the way, Kit, I forgot to ask you. Do you have any errands to do? Any place I can take you? Not today, thank you, darling. What about your breakfast? Oh, I've had coffee. If it's all right with you, I think I'll wait until we get out to the beach. After having tasted your housekeeper's cooking last night... (laughs) Fine, you can have breakfast with Lisa. She'll probably just be getting up when we get there. By the way, have you talked to the rental agent? Mm Mm-hmm. Said he had two houses he could show you. One of them, I know. Just a few houses north of mine. Very attractive. Well, that sounds encouraging. You know I have to be out of the hotel tomorrow. Mm, well, don't worry. I, I think you'll like this place. What about getting a servant? I thought you were accustomed to doing your own housework now, Kit. <laughs> Darling, <laughs> after the months I've put in in Bungalow B of the Wakefield Auto Court, I've had quite enough of housework for the time being. <laughs> you sound as if Bungalow had B had been more of a prison than a love nest. Let's stick to the subject of house hunting in California, shall we? All right. But of course, you must realize that your refusal to talk about the only need in your life with him makes me very suspicious. I realize that. Also, it makes me convinced that my suspicions are justified. I wouldn't let my imagination go too far if I were you, Paul. Well, I'd be an awful hypocrite if I pretended that I'd be happy if things were going smoothly between you and Bill. That's very flattering. Doesn't it mean anything to you that I'm a frustrated man? You? Frustrated? (laughs) Oh, it looks like it. (laughs) Well, all right, then. All right. But to return to the servant problem... I've thought about that. You can probably have my housekeeper, Mrs. Kingsley, most of the time. After all, I have Max, and I'm alone, so... I won't need her so very much. If you promise to have me over frequently for dinner. (laughs) (laughs) What's so funny? Oh, I was just thinking about you with your two expectant mothers on your hands. <laughs> oh, you're a cute kid, aren't you? <laughs> well, has Lisa accepted my invitation to come live with me? Mm, I think I've talked her into it, yes. I can hardly blame her for being reluctant. It does look odd. After all, Lisa and I have just met. Well, I've told her you do impulsive things like that, and I, I really want to do everything I can to help her. Oh, I'm not so worried about Lisa now. It's what's going to happen to her afterwards. With her husband gone and the child, well, it all seems so unfair to her. And to the baby. Uh-huh. You know, I'd feel better about her if she didn't want the baby. There are so many people of good background, income. The child could have a happy, normal life. Lisa could find herself in an apartment and go on with a dancing career. And you'd feel better? Yes, of course. Well, I wouldn't cross that bridge yet if I were you. I think that perhaps Lisa and I can become very good friends. If she'll learn to trust me, a lot of things may be ironed out. I don't know what I'd have done without you, Kit. The feeling is mutual, Paul. Being out here without anyone wouldn't be my idea of heaven. That's why I can't figure out why you came out here to have this child. I, I don't see how you could leave Bill or that he'd let you go. All right, darling, I won't keep you dangling anymore. But you can forget the idea that there's anything wrong between Bill and me. I'll tell you why I don't want anyone to know about the baby, Paul. One day, several weeks ago, I went to Dad's office to tell him the good news. I started out by talking about having a family. 
You know, the way you build up to something like that. Dad looked very worried, upset. Finally, he told me that since I was thinking along the lines I obviously was, he thought he should tell me about my mother's family. What about your mother's family? Oh, it's just that the medical history of the Bowmans follows a, a certain pattern. Every so often, there's a child born who, well, who isn't as it should be. Yes. Right. That's ghastly. Yes. Yes, it is. And when you found out, you... You were already... I was. So that's why I'm here. I didn't want to have a child in Wakefield. If something went wrong, I... Well, I just couldn't bear the thought of the town talking about it. I understand. You're a really amazing kid. I... I mean, most women would be all shot. They... Well, they just go to pieces. Oh, I'm not so brave. Frankly, I dread the whole thing. Of course, there's a good chance that everything will be all right, isn't there? I think there is. Now. And your father doesn't know where you are? Oh, Dad knows I'm in California. I sent him a wire that I arrived all right. But he's not going to have my address. He'll understand the whole thing in due time. For the moment, I don't care what he makes of it. And Ben Calvert was making his own conclusions as to his daughter's departure and Bill Meade's refusal to tell him where Kit was staying. He was quite certain that where Kit had really gone was to Reno to get a divorce, a divorce he was determined to prevent. This afternoon in Wakefield, Ben was sitting in the coffee shop of the Brown Palace Hotel, an untouched glass of beer before him. Ben's mind was occupied with ways and means. He had to get Kit back, and he had to save his face. A man took the stool next to his at the counter. It was Fred Clark, the station master, notably long-winded, and Ben didn't feel like talking. Howdy, Ben. Hello there, Fred. I saw you sitting over here. How's tricks, Ben? Business good as usual? I can't complain. No, I guess you can't. <laughs> Same can't be said for other folks, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is the first day I've had away from the station in months. Been busy in the one-armed paper hanger. Looks like the more the government asks people to stay home, the more folks want to travel. Perversity of human nature, I call it. I guess so. Well, uh, I guess you'll be going out west next. Out west? Yeah. Oh, you mean to join Kit? And Jesse Ward. What are you talking about? Jesse's going up to Wisconsin for a couple of weeks. Then she sure took the long way to get there. Sold her the ticket myself. Round trip to Los Angeles, California and back. What? So you thought she was in Wisconsin? Oh, I... I guess I just misunderstood Jessie. I didn't pay much attention when she was talking about this trip. For some reason, I just had an idea she was going to Wisconsin, but I'm sure I misunderstood her. <laughs> yeah. Looks that way, don't it? Yes. It does. But then Calvert knew perfectly well he hadn't misunderstood his secretary. Why had Jesse lied to him? As he thought of Jesse, he recalled her face as it had been lately. Smug, self-satisfied. He remembered several things she'd said when he talked about Kit. Things he hadn't paid any attention to at the moment. What was Jesse after? Then Calvert became aware that Fred Clark was looking at him closely. He drank his beer and started talking about the news. But in the back of his mind was an uneasy feeling that was growing into fear. I wonder if Ben's secretary will be able to locate Kit Mead when she arrives in Los Angeles. 